Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, we're going to talk about the open-close principle and how it applies in Unity. This is the second of the solid principles. If you haven't seen my video on the first, the single responsibility principle, go check that out when you're done with this one. But for now, let's just get started. So I have here a sample scene, the little project that has a spaceship and a weapon on it that, as you can tell, maybe looking at this, that it's going to fire off a bullet. And if I hit play and click, we should just see a bullet fire off. My bullets are just little spears. Nothing too exciting. And I can fire once a second based on that refresh rate. Let's look at this script real quick. And if we take a real quick look, you'll see we've got a bullet prefab that was already assigned there, a refresh rate. Uh, next fire time, just to keep track of when we can fire again using this can fire method. And then in update, we check if we can fire. If we click fire one, which is like left click or space or control or A button. Then we fire the weapon and to fire the weapon we set the refresh time right here then we instantiate the bullet and launch it forward. So that's cool like we got a nice basic little bullet launching system but now let's say our project needs a missile launching system too so our our ships now need to fire something you know more than just bullets. So let's go into the second scene we have set up here We've done a little bit of a change here. So now you can see I'm using another version of this weapon script. I just named them Weapon 1, 2, and 3. It's essentially the same script with some changes. This one's much worse, though. So let's take a look. We've got here a bullet prefab and a missile prefab. If I play and start shooting, the bullet should fire out. Now, if I play and I don't have a bullet prefab assigned, and instead I have a missile prefab, let's drop that in there and start shooting, we'll see the missile fire out. And the missile is just a square box, and right now it's flying at the camera because it's picking a random target. So that's why it's coming right at us. Or I think it's picking the first transform in the scene. So that kind of works. We can do two different things. Let's look at the code and see how that looks. Um, you see now we've got two different prefabs here. We've got the same refresh, the same fire, the same check for update to see if we pressed fire. Oh, actually, we're not checking if we can fire. So we do like can fire and that. So we want to make sure that our refresh rate is obeyed. And then we fire weapon. But in our fire weapon, it's starting to get a little bit messy. We have these bullet prefab checks here. So if we have a bullet prefab, we instantiate that and launch it the same way we were launching it before. If we have a missile prefab, we find a target, create the missile, and then set the target for the missile. And as you can see here, every time we want to add new functionality to this weapon, if we go with this model, we're going to have to keep adding in changes to this script. So our, our weapon is definitely not closed for modification, which is the second part, that closed part of the open-close principle. It's also not open for extension. There's no way to improve this class or make it do more without going in and modifying the class. So. Right now, it's while it's not terrible, it's on the path to getting really bad. You can imagine once we have five, ten different types of weapons, all of a sudden this fire weapon code gets messy, and this class starts growing and growing and growing, also violating the single responsibility principle and just doing way too many things. So let's see how we can refactor this down into a method or a, a solution that follows the open-close principle and keeps things a lot cleaner, makes it so we can modify our behavior without modifying the weapon class. So I'm going to open up the sample for weapon 3 right here and don't save. Now if we look here this spaceship is a little bit different. We've got a weapon script on it again just named weapon 3 third version of this and all you see here is a fire refresh rate and then we have an additional script here for a bullet launcher. Now I'm going to press play one time just show that it works and then we're going to dive into the code and see how this is set up and why this could be better. So the first thing I want to do is open up the weapon script. And you may notice that our prefabs were missing. So we don't have a bullet prefab and a missile prefab on our weapon. Instead, we just have an eye launcher interface. So something that implements eye launcher is going to get found and assigned right here in awake. We're going to look through our components, find the first eye launcher. Now, in our fire weapon method, all we call is launcher.launch this. So our weapon doesn't care how the launcher does what it does. It doesn't care what it actually launches out. It could launch out a bullet. It could launch a missile. It could launch a laser. It could launch some little mini drone ships that fly around. Anything that we want is all done by the launcher. And all we need to call is launcher.launch. And we're just passing in the weapon so that we can get things like the position of it 
or the orientation so we know which way to launch things. So let's look at that launcher interface and here you see we just have an interface with a launch method and a weapon as the parameter but now let's go back to the Unity project and see how this is actually working. So we have here a bullet launcher on the same game object. I'm going to open that up. And here you see we just create another model behavior that implements the iLauncher interface. And here in the launch method, we do the specific code for launching a bullet. So a lot like in our weapon 2, where we had this if statement with this chunk of code here that we had to paste in and we had to keep modifying weapon 2, keep adding new functionality. Instead, what we're going to do, what we do here is just create a new launcher class that does whatever that launcher needs to do with whatever specific fields that launcher needs. And then we call the launch method and it does all the work. So if we go back over, so we can also just remove this bullet launcher and maybe add a missile launcher. And now you see the missile launcher has its own field for prefab for a missile. Just assign the missile, press play and start, and the missile should just start flying at the enemy ship. Uh, I, again, I think I'm not obeying refresh rates here. Yeah, I'm not. So let's do the uh, if can fire and input fire down. So I was hitting the button a little too fast and they were coming out quick. I want to look at the missile launcher real quick again just to reiterate how this works. So again, we have the iLauncher interface implemented on the missile launcher, which just has a launch method. Again, no difference between this and the bullet launcher's definition for a launch method or the in interface for the launch method. They have to be the same. And in here, we do something totally different. We find a target, and then we instantiate a missile and set a target. And again, remember that going this way, we can start to have fields on here, like um, you know, serialized field. We can have like a private float missile self-destruct timer, like that. And we can have like a, you know a field where the missiles self-destruct and they blow themselves up after a while and it could vary per launcher, not just on the missile prefab. And we don't have to go into our weapon script to change it. In fact, the way this is set up right now, I probably wouldn't have to jump into this weapon script and modify anything anytime soon. You know, I can't think of anything that I would need to add for this basic launching stuff. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful and kind of explains the how to use open close principle in Unity. There are other ways that you can, can follow the same principle with abstract classes, um, sometimes just with delegate events on things. So another way we can do this is have our weapon fire off an event and then have other components on the game object just listen for that event. Again, we'd still be following the same principle where we're not having to modify our weapon. But this is just a, an easy, simple way, and it also shows how to use interfaces. So it's one that I, I like to use. Um, definitely try it out if, if you start to see you know, some messy stuff like this where you're starting to get a bunch of if statements or switch statements to handle the logic of your class. Consider splitting it up, use an interface, make it clean, and you'll be happy in the long run. So hopefully this video is helpful. If you like it, don't forget to share with friends. Uh, hit thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks for watching.